Welcome y'all, it's Wes with DIY Food Plot Pro. Thank you so much for joining us. Today's episode, we are going to talk about whether we can accurately predict what this fall will hold in the way of acorn production. I recently posted a video talking about how I was struggling with volunteer Roundup Ready corn that the deer didn't eat last year because of the overabundance of white oak acorns that were produced last fall. Most of the food plots were touched very minimal across my 1800 acre. I had everything from corn, I had some soybeans, brassicas, annual clovers, cereal rye, oats, you name it, I had a bunch of it on the outfit. And largely, it was unused last fall, leading me to a large problem that I'm having this year of Roundup resistant corn that I wanna plant back into standing corn for the whitetails as baiting is not allowed in my area. So I posted that video and I had one of my viewers reach out and he said, you know Wes, it looks like to me we're stacking up for another huge acorn crop. Why would you even worry about planting corn? And I thought about that question and I thought, man, that is a fantastic idea to make a video on. And I'm so thankful for the viewer to reach out for that. A lot of times these videos are questions that people ask. So. I want to encourage all of you, if you have a question, put it on the comments below the video and I will make a note of it and I will try to make a video explaining or talking about the subject that you want to be talked about. We have a large stand of hardwood timber behind us, mainly white and red oaks, probably 60, 70% oaks. But it leads us to the question, can we accurately predict what the acorn crop will be like in the fall? I think many of us would hunt very differently if I told you right now, early May, the white oaks are not gonna fall this year, but there's gonna be a tremendous amount of red oaks or neither one are gonna fall this year. That may make a lot of us want to switch and do a lot more food plotting. As I was growing up, the old saying was, about every other year, maybe every third year, you having a good acorn crop. I think this is vitally important for food plotters and for hunters to understand and to be able to kind of have an idea of what are some of the things that we're looking for that determines whether these acorns are going to fall in the fall or not. 2020, 2021, 2022 and 2023 were all way above average acorn crops for this area. So that really dispels the myth of every other year, every third year, every fourth year. I can tell in my neck of the woods at least that that is a false statement. There is no truth whatsoever to that. So what does acorn production have to do with? So there's actually a tremendous amount of variables that go into acorn production. It's really not black and white like a lot of us would believe. There are some major events that happen that absolutely determine acorn production, such as a late freeze when the oaks are flowering. A lot of us have seen oaks flowering, may not know what that was, it's those little S looking things that if you park your truck underneath an oak tree, you'll have them all over the hood of your truck and all over the glass. That's when oak trees are flowering, okay? So a frost at that point is going to hurt acorn production significantly for that year. Very similar to a late frost in say a corn crop, soybean crop, depending upon the of how cold that got, how long that cold spell lasts, that can be very detrimental to that year's acorn crop. Here's one that really threw me for a curveball when I read and was doing a lot of research on this. Excessive rainfall amounts during pollen shed can negatively impact acorn production. That's kind of mind boggling for me because I think of that as in terms of corn, soybeans, food plots. When they're doing their thing, when they're fixing to put the seed on, when the corn's putting the silks on and the tassels, the soybeans have the flowers and the pods are coming on. That's when rain is the most important for those crops. For oak trees, too much rainfall during those spells when pollen is flowing can wash a lot of that pollen out of the air and not pollinate a lot of those acorns. That was something that was really surprising to me that I found when I was reading about this was excessive rainfall amounts in the spring during pollen shed can negatively affect acorn production. Insects are another big deal when it comes to acorn production. There's a, something that called a weevil 
that can get inside those acorns and can really uh, limit the amount of, of acorn production that year. Uh, also, high temperatures can cause that. Although in my neck of the woods, we're in Western Kentucky, summers are extremely hot. I'm not gonna say that the last four summers that we've had have been any hotter than any in the past. We've had hot days, we have cool days, we have some in between. I think temperature obviously plays some role, but maybe not as big a role as some of these other items. Rainfall can obviously impact any food source from reaching its full potential. Anytime that we're growing corn, we're growing soybeans, we're growing peas, whatever we're growing, we don't get the rain, obviously we're not gonna get the growth. Same way with oak trees. If they don't get the rains, they can't produce what they would have if they would have got those timely spring, summer, and fall rains to produce those crops. So there's a large difference between white oaks and red oaks. Most of us understand this. White oaks are built on this year. So essentially what that means is white oaks do their thing from this spring until this fall, then they drop. So if they have a late freeze, you can expect very minimal white oak acorns. Where red oaks take about two growing seasons, about 15 months to drop theirs. You can have a year to where the white oaks may not have had anything because of a late frost, where the red oaks do really, really well. A lot of us have seen that over the years where one of the two does really well and the other one does really, really bad. Last year for us, we had both were doing very, very well. There was very little difference in the amount of red oaks or white oaks. Both of them did phenomenal for us last year. One thing that I was that I found very, very interesting when I was doing a lot of this research is we have things called masting years or heavy mast years. This is something that is really a phenomenon that happens once out of every three to five years. They can happen more often than that, but very common once every three to five years, you're gonna have a heavy masting crop of acorns. And what is that? That is where you just have that overly abundant supply of acorns like we had last year in 2023. I have seen a lot of acorns around the last three, four years, but I have never seen them as thick as what they were last year. It was absolutely unbelievable where you put your foot down and I'd be on seven or eight white oak acorns. That's how thick they were. And it was like that all over the woods. If you found a white oak tree, it was just unbelievable amounts of white oak acorns. So as I started doing more research about this, we don't fully understand this yet, why this happens. I read a bunch of theories about it and a lot of them make sense. A lot of them think this is nature's way of being able to start the next generation of saplings, of young oak trees. And it makes sense if you think about it. We Most of us are living in high density deer herds, all right, so we're in we're well over a hundred deer a square mile here, well over that where we're at in Western Kentucky. We're probably 60% ag, the other 40% remaining woods, and of that 40%, probably 60% is some form of oaks. If we have a normal acorn crop, the deer, the turkeys, the squirrels, any other animals that are gonna eat those acorns are gonna wipe those out. There's nothing left to start that new generation of young white oaks. I have seen this many, many years over time, and I've often wondered this, like how in the world do these trees get started? I know how they did many moons ago when the populations weren't that high. How do they do that now? And these heavy masting years really make a lot of sense. Essentially what happens is they supply so many acorns that the wildlife can't eat them all. They sprout, they turn into young white oak and red oak trees for the next generation of trees. Just something I thought was really, really, really interesting when I was reading about this is those heavy masting years. No question about it, last year was that for us. I think last year was above and beyond what we had the previous three years. So as I did all this research, I quickly came to the conclusion that it is impossible to tell 100% certain what the acorn crop is gonna be like for this fall. I think that we have an above average chance of having another good acorn crop. We had zero late freezes. We've had ample rainfall. I wouldn't consider what the rain that we've had to be excessive as far as washing the pollen away. The insects, the summer rains, 
the summer temperatures are still to be determined on a lot of these crops. But if I was a betting man right now, I would bet that we are in for another good acorn crop this fall. But like I said, everything I read, all the studies that I, that I went through said it is extremely difficult to pinpoint to what kind of acorn crop we're going to have for this fall. That's just something that the technology is not there yet. We don't know enough to make that decision with confidence yet. So just a, a fun video that I thought you, a lot of y'all would find interesting. I hope it was very helpful to you. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Smash that like and subscribe button if you hadn't already.